Hi there, everyone. How are you doing? It's Jeff C. It is uh, Friday, September the 12th. Long time no here, perhaps. <laughs> Unless you've been listening to We'll Do It Live. I haven't done a video in, in some time because, of course, my account was suspended. Which uh, is just the reality of censorship right now in the 21st century. Um, that's what's going to happen from now on. I mean, it's been happening ever since I've had an account and it's... Uh, it's very frustrating because you get a lot of momentum when you do this work. Um, our channels never get featured. My videos never, you know, get the light of day when it comes to YouTube. Buried in the dark corner sort of thing. And yet I still get a strong following and uh, worked years to build up that following, to have an audience, to earn that audience. And YouTube can just pull the rug right out from underneath you and steal all the hard work that you've done they can also erase you from history which is the most disturbing uh, fact for me dealing with this censorship this um insane uh you know bushism really this three strikes and you're out uh it is it, it is unbelievable and if it does happen to me and they do uh delete my account i will take legal action against youtube uh, against google and I'll raise a ruckus doing so because uh, they're not going to erase years worth of work just because they don't like what I'm saying. And of course, the reason they don't like what I'm saying is because it's the truth. And the truth is a dirty word in the 21st century, right? In 2014, the truth is a, it's an evil word. You know, they, they mock us in the media, uh, in the corporate media outlets when they say truthers, truthers, right? They turn, they take the term that is supposed to be pure, that is supposed to be, you know, something that you can ha hang on to. It's it's real. It's true, right? You've either got, you know, $15 in your pocket or you don't, right? You've either got, you know, uh, a good stock of beer in your fridge or you don't. It's a truth, right? And they will take that and turn it around and use it as a weapon against you. So we saw the dumb turds and many others like Anderson Cooper go on about truthers when Sandy Hook happened and... Again, with Boston and all these false flags that they have launched in order to manipulate the minds of the uh, corporate media drinking sheeple. I don't like to use the term sheeple, but if people don't wake up, if they choose to be ignorant uh, or ignore ants, right? Where they ignore the facts that are put in front of their faces every single day, then, uh, you know... It's, it's very difficult. It's very difficult to break down these control mechanisms that uh, are working so competently at keeping people as ignorant as possible. And uh, these this is what pre-radio revolution is all about. So I'm not sure where you're going to be watching this video because my channel is suspended. So I'm uploading this to a backup channel. And I'm hoping perhaps some of my friends uh, will find this and put it up on their channel so it gets more ears. And perhaps when my channel is uh, is unsuspended, <laughs> I might try to upload this again to my main channel. Um, so, you know, what I do and what I do with those people I work with is is break down the the lies that come off the corporate media to expose the whole control system that is at work, keeping people as ignorant as possible, and and. Uh, what happens often is that you start to see the gatekeepers. Um, whenever I call out gatekeepers, it's always kind of risky because these are people that are considered to be alternative media, right? Unless you're Mark Dice, which is so painfully obvious. Um, but when you know, when I call out Infowars, for instance, uh, Paul Joseph Watts and people like that. And I, I always caution to say that not everything they do is, is disinfo. Of course not. They give you a lot of good information, but they often mislead you on the most important uh, topics. And, and that is really, um, it's the big question that you have to ask yourself why they do this. And that is why myself, uh, along with others that I work with, have called out some of these big alternative media channels uh, on several occasions um, because it's a dangerous game that they play. If they are not giving you the truth on the most important events, then, you know, what's the point of them, right? So um, when my channel goes down, I get nobody, 
Infowars is not there. You know, uh, we are change aren't there. Nobody's nobody's coming to my defense except those people that are my friends, of course, like people like Red Pill Revolution and Max Resistance and you know all the great subs that I have. Um, there's a lot of really smaller channels that have sprung up and made some great videos supporting me and calling out people like Mark Dice, uh, Big Daddy Dunk, I think is one of them. I want to thank you very much for your work. And, uh, but that's it. I mean, we're, you know, uh, we're the first casualty of the truth is, is our channels, right? I mean, our channels get ripped down. So it's, I'm going to have to do things to uh, adapt and to evolve to the censorship that is happening on Google platforms and all the platforms. I mean, we're, we just heard the other day how the federal government, I believe, is threatened to fine uh, Yahoo two hundred fifty thousand dollars a day for not, you know, handing over information to the NSA. So, uh, I mean, by hook or by crook, they're trying to get every piece of information that they can on us. They're watching us, and then they are censoring us, and it's it's very very nasty. And this is the new world order. Now, of course, it is September the 12th, and as I predicted, nothing major happened on September the 11th. I, I said it the other day where I said, look, they're not going to use the same day to carry out another 9-11. They'll use another day, maybe six months away from that, so that they can terrorize people year-round. And that is very important to them, the use of dates and numbers and, and being able to constantly keep people in a state of fear it's one of the things that I've tried to show constantly on Free Radio Revolution, how the media uses this fear to control the people that are out there and to influence them and their decisions. And, of course, to get them to send their children off to fight wars on the other side of the world, which um, are basically wars for the military industrial complex. Uh, if you're sending if you if you're a soldier and you're in Iraq or Afghanistan, you know, I don't know what to say to you. I don't, I, you know, maybe you just weren't smart enough, you know, um, that's all. But uh, hopefully you learn your lessons from being in those places and you come back and you contribute to what we're trying to do, which is expose what is really going on. So uh, without any further ado, I wanted to talk about this. I, I heard this just now and I was, I saw, I was, of course, the title uh, caught my eye, Joining the New World Order by Stefan Molyneux. And uh, those people that uh, know my channel know I'm no fan of Stefan Molyneux. I, I've said that he does do some good things. I agree with with a lot of his parenting suggestions and relationships and things like that. He does have some good stuff. Of course, you have to have good stuff. That's the whole purpose of gatekeeping, right? You have to be able to bring people in. And what Stefan Molyneux does is he often uses these flashy titles. Um, a good example would be here, The Truth About the ISIS Beheadings, 9-11 Continued, in which he blames these beheadings, of course, on the actions of the state. <laughs> Completely missing the reality of what the beheadings are, which is staged events. And this is what I really come down hard on people like Stefan Molyneux because time and time again, he releases these videos, the truth about. Uh, the truth about Gandhi, the truth about, you know, Che Guevara, the truth about, uh, you know, Vladimir Putin. Then it's the truth about Elliot Roger, the truth about, you know, what, what the, movie, the, the, the movie The Fr Frozen. <laughs> I don't even know the names of these movies. The truth about these Disney movies. The truth about the Lego movie. I mean, he does the truth about everything. And I'm doing the truth about uh, Stefan Molyneux here. Um, this guy is a gatekeeper, and he is willing to sell out. He has just put up a video saying how much he wouldn't mind getting that call from the Bilderbergs. And that uh, he's thought about it many times. And he's thought about installing a red phone. So that he could take that and he goes into great detail why he thinks that way and he starts criticizing, uh, he even criticizes all the people that post comments on his channel. Um, and then he starts criticizing all these uh, people that worship football and just regular Americans, right? Like what we call sheep, uh, basically. And the difference between his sort of criticism of the... Um, of the sheeple, I guess you could say, and mine, is that I'm trying to reach the sheeple. I don't think all these people are idiots. I think they're victims, and I think that our society has been engineered to create these people. 
they want cattle. They don't want thinking human beings. They want cattle, right? And what Stefan Molyneux does here is he rips them apart because he feels that they have neglected their, their right to choose, um, that they can't handle any freedom. So they beg for the state to, to come in and uh, coddle them and, and uh, make their decisions for them. When the reality is, is that most people are completely brainwashed by the state that starts in our education system. So that it's, it's so hypocritical of this guy to go on and on about, you know, how parents are terrible these days and, you know, institutions are terrible and that yet turn around and blame all the ordinary people who have been hooked up to the glucose fructose. And when we say that on Free Radio Revolution, that goes way back, right? When we talk about genetically modified foods and, and um, high fructose corn sugar and all these hideous products, aspartame, sorbitol, you know, zytol, all these things that are should be 100% banned um, by countries like United States, Canada, and are banned in places like Europe and Japan, right? Uh, but here in the United States are not only tolerated, but in everything, uh, soy is a product of is almost in everything that you eat, whether it be bread or cookies or, you know, just anything, you know, that you can pull out of your closet or your cupboard basically has soy in it. And 99 percent of soy pretty much is is genetically modified. Pretty much all soy is genetically modified. See, it's almost impossible to avoid the GMOs and what these things do to our bodies and our minds. And then if we couple that with all the propaganda the movies the uh violence the the television programming the shows like 24 homeland all these shows that continually drive people into a state of fear uh, a fear state paradigm and of course the events like 9 11 um could the sheeple be blamed for 9 11 i i really don't see how you can blame the sheeple for 9 11 because uh they you know were victims like we all were we don't have the ability to control these governments and we don't have the ability to uh, expose right at this moment everything that they're up to. And um, someone like uh, Stefan Molyneux will put together a whole video here, a series of videos talking about the truth of 9-11 and all that being the consequence of U.S. foreign policy and all that. And this is the biggest problem and this is why Stefan Molyneux is, is really a fucking idiot. Because at the end of the day, if you are so stupid that you still buy <laughs> the corporate media stories, that you haven't learned your lessons, um, you're not one bit better. If anything, you're worse than the sheeple that are out there. Because you should know better, right? With uh, all your, your, your ability and your all your videos that you've done. I imagine you've done enough research on things. But uh, where is your research coming from? And if your research is coming from sources like uh, the New York Times, the Dumb Turds, or, you know, uh, Forbes or whatever, right? Is it What is it worth? The Economist, right? What is it worth? It's all gibberish in order to, con, you know, control your mind. And that is the state that we're living in. So I want you to listen clearly. And um, I'm hoping that some uh, Stefan Molyneux listeners, and they tend to plague my videos. Whenever I put up a video criticizing Stefan Molyneux, I get all these... Stefan Molyneux heads, I don't know what you call them, um, right? But they come over and they, they start attacking me. And it's generally, you know, um, ad hominem attacks, stuff like that. Logical fallacies, which is the height of irony when you're talking about a philosopher, right? Uh, who, who really thinks his shit doesn't stink. Well, it stinks to high heaven. And I hope that this video is going to show you how badly it stinks. Uh, I want you to listen in to Stefan Molyneux, um, you know, talk uh, about how much he would really wouldn't mind that call coming in from the Bilderbergs. So let's listen in here and I'll come back and offer some comments. Mm, victims of child abuse, essentially. Yeah? Um, I have problems with that because at some point I feel that my childhood was really, really bad. Yeah. Then, but then at another point, I'm like, no, it's not actually... You know, I, I don't know how I should look at the events that happened in my past and how severe they actually are. And, I mean, it is strange because I know that some of the things that happened back in my early childhood influenced my actions today quite a bit, but I feel like they actually shouldn't. Can you understand that in any way, shape, or form? I think that you're raising a whole bunch of... Uh 
noise, if you don't mind me saying so. I think you're raising a whole bunch of noise to avoid the basic issues. Okay, so what are the basic issues you saying? I don't know if you know the old Bob Dylan song. You've got to serve uh, somebody. Got to no. serve somebody. I won't sing it, but uh, it says, You may be an ambassador to England or France. You may like to gamble. You might like to dance. You may be the heavyweight champion of the world. You may be a socialite with a long string of pearls, but you're going to have to serve somebody. Yes, indeed, you are going to have to serve somebody. Well, it may be the devil or it may be the Lord, but you're going to have to serve somebody. You might be a rock and roll addict prancing on the stage. You might have drugs at your command, women in a cage. You may be a businessman or some high-degree thief. They may call you doctor or they may call you chief. You may be a state trooper. You might be a young Turk. You may be the head of some big TV network. You may be rich or poor. You may be blind or lame. You may be living in another country under another name, but you're going to have to serve somebody. Yes, indeed, you're going to have to serve somebody. And the song goes on. I think Mavis Staples is a great version of this. But, uh, yeah, we do. We, we have to serve. And... There is a line right down the middle of the world, and there's a virtuous side, and there's an evil side. <laughs> and the reason that I'm saying you're making a lot of noise to oh, avoid the basic man. issue is that part of you wants to fight evil and part of you wants to give up, right? Mm-hmm. So, the part of you that wants to fight evil is the virtuous part, and the part of you that wants to give up is the part that wishes to serve evil. Right? Because if you give up, well... So I want to come in here for a second before I continue, and I haven't gotten near to the part that uh, is really going to rock your world sort of thing, but um, you got to serve somebody. Now, Bob Dylan, I'm, I'm a big fan of Bob Dylan. Um, I listen to a lot of his music, play a lot of his music, and uh, I disagree uh, wholeheartedly with that song and that statement, you've got to serve somebody. I don't agree with that. I think that is New World Order programming. I think that you can literally make your own community and serve your own and grow your own food and, and you know, make your own rules and all that. You can. And that is what they want to prevent us from ever doing, right? They want us to be completely dependent on everything. Bob Dylan made a deal at some point. You can see where he talks about making the deal, um, whether he signed the deal with the devil or, or whatever. Uh, you can just YouTube search that Bob Dylan makes deal with the devil or I don't know what the search would be. But that's what happens when you go into the music industry at some point. Uh, you're offered the deal, and, and if you take the deal, well, you're going to have to deliver on, on what they expect you to deliver on. And uh, that might be propaganda, it might be... You know all different kinds of things as we see a lot of the uh, a lot of the artists get killed at certain times all these things happen those who do not uh, toe the line are eliminated maybe Joan Rivers was murdered recently Robin Williams who knows right um, I don't really care all that much but nonetheless they make a deal so that whole song to me you got to serve somebody is uh, is a lot of mental uh, control it's it's a uh, really a new world order uh, theme song in a way which is sad to say from Bob Dylan because he's such a great songwriter but nonetheless I mean you could use your great songwriting for good or you could use it for evil if the world was only such black and white divide it right down the middle not divide it down the middle at all I don't believe in that bullshit at all yes I do believe evil does tend to control the world just because evil is more callous and you know doesn't think twice about stepping on or stomping out other people uh, in the process um but i think it's far more complex than that and uh you know this is just a very simple way of, of breaking it down but that's what stefan molyneux does so let's continue with uh the real bombshell here then evil wins right the only thing that is necessary for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing right I think it's actually even a bit worse than that because a part All right. of me is saying <laughs> that I'm willing no, to hear how it's worse than that. Yeah, a part of me is actually saying, like the old saying goes, if you can't beat them, join them. Oh yeah, that no, is... of course, of course. I mean, I, 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 I will tell you. Can I tell you something, Paul? Just between you and me. Sure. Mm. Sometimes, not often, but sometimes. 
I would not mind a call from the Bilderbergers. <laughs> I would not mind a call from the New World Order. <laughs> Come on, I've got lots of skills. Listen to me preach, listen to my verbal skills, listen to my intelligence, listen to my metaphors. You have a really high opinion of yourself, too, you fucking scumbag. Oh, come on, Darth Vader, pick up the phone. I bring my own two Death Stars swinging like castanets between my Julius Caesar-style thighs. The fuck? Um, yeah, there, of course there is that temptation. Of course there is that temptation. Evil has the upper hand, right? Evil had the upper hand in your childhood, right? Read your adverse childhood experience. Well, the evil has is... the upper hand, and evil makes a shit ton of money. So, evil gets the girls. Evil gets the money. Evil gets the power. Evil kind of runs the world at the moment, right? Less so than in the past, but only because we've got the drug of fiat currency and all that kind of stuff to take away the immediate pain of domination. But, uh, oh, yeah, no, I get it. If you can't beat him, join him. Oh, yeah, you don't think it's uh, crossed my mind from time to time? Oh, yeah. All right. You have to seriously wonder about somebody who uh, is putting up a video joining the New World Order and is talking about how excited he would be if he got a, a phone call from the Bilderbergs, basically. Then you take a look at all his videos, uh, the truth of, the truth of this, the truth of that, the hundreds of thousands, millions of views that he gets. I already did a video talking about the half million views that he had on the truth of Elliot Roger. So you have a gatekeeper, a, a full-fledged 100% gatekeeper who is working for the New World Order. Now, I don't know if they're financing him. Uh, I don't know. I really don't know. And I'm not going to even bother to speculate. But coming from the horse's mouth, as you hear right here, he is almost relishing the, uh, the opportunity. You can hear the glee in his voice. And what that tells me, quite simply, is that this is a guy that would sell out in a heartbeat, which means he's probably already sold out. And if he hasn't sold out, he's one of the biggest idiots in the history of fucking humanity because the, 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 those truth of every single stinking truth about video is bullshit. It's based on corporate media lies. So when you talk about the truth of 9-11 or the truth of the beheadings recently, the truth is those are staged events that they were actually carried out by the thing called the New World Order. And um, the fact that you're talking about joining this and that you wouldn't mind, I think that exposes you 100%. So it's pretty disgusting. But let's continue, shall we? Oh, yeah. No, I, I'd like to get that red phone installed and wait for the call from the powers that be and say... Uh, yeah, you know, I uh, I think I get it. I think I get where you guys are coming from because uh, sometimes it feels like it's just a feeling and it's just a temptation. But I will tell you, Paul, isn't it hard to look at humanity sometimes and not just think, what are you people fit for except being ruled? Ooh. Exactly. They... Ooh. It's hard to look at humanity sometimes and say that. I don't know. I mean, I look at humanity. I see all the the fat people that are out there. And I think, my word, you know, um, these poor people. If only I could reach them. If only they knew what I knew. If only I could share all this information instantly with everyone that I met. And that they would be enlightened. I don't look at humanity as useless uh, bottom feeders like the New World Order looks at them. Like Kissinger looks at them. Like Brzezinski looks at them. I look at them as victims of this mind control, this system, which uh, really started with television more than anything else, that has programmed people to become cattle, essentially. And you know what they like to do to cattle? They like to make cattle completely inactive and obese, because then you're able to profit from the cattle. So they don't, they're not, as far as we know, they're not cutting up people and serving them in, in burgers. <laughs> Although there is a crazy uh, Jewish uh, uh, rabbi out there, Abe Finkelstein, that says that's exactly what they're doing. That's exactly what McDonald's meat is. I won't touch that. That's hilarious. But nonetheless, um, they are creating these fat bodies and they profit from them in so many different ways. If we think about uh, just from the entertainment, going, buying, paying for the movies, the video games, all that crap. 
uh, buying the junk food, right? Buying it, buying it, buying it. Of course, the banks, right? Nothing better than the banks, right? The banks will give you a free movie ticket, but they'll fucking steal from you, right? And they'll fucking take your money, that little bit of money that you work your ass off to get, and you have to pay almost half of it to taxes, uh, and they'll bet that over 15, 20 times, and, uh, you know, all the nastiness that happens there. Um, yeah, they... <laughs> You know, when you watch the movie The Matrix and you think about the uh, people that are in the tubes that are, you know, living their life in a, like a dream state sort of thing with all these machines attached to them and they have no idea, right? It, it, in many ways, it's a perfect metaphor for the people that are out there, the sheeple as we call them, right? That um, they are oblivious, uh, 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 you know, they are completely oblivious to the control that they're under and that is what we have been trying to do collectively i think all the people that i've worked with uh, the history of free radio revolution is reaching people and saying look you can't eat this food you can't watch this television you can't watch these movies and not so much that you can't but if you're going to do any of that you have to be aware of what it is right and that's why we say to kids you know the old saying don't you know don't take candy from strangers you don't take candy from strangers, but you accept a complete stranger on your television telling you that something terrible has happened and somehow you're going to be affected by it, right? And you're you're accepting that person as someone that you trust because of the manipulation and mind control that is, you know, throughout the history of, of television. That is really the fabric of television. The, the fabric of television itself is mind control. That is what its number one purpose is. So if we've got 35% of Americans who are literally obese that is not the fault of the 35 percent of americans most of them grew up in homes where their parents bought them fruit loops and count chocula for breakfast and had chocolate milk and coca-cola for lunch i used to have coca-cola every day for lunch right and and you know swiss rolls and all the sugar and i felt like crap all the time when i was a teen and that was just what people bought that's what, uh, you know, my mother could afford. Hey, it's five bucks for 24 Cokes. That's pretty cheap, right? Um, that is how it works. And, you know, when you break out of the mind control, then you realize how all these people are really victims. So I think it's it's very important to note here that um, Stefan Molyneux is talking with disgust and disdain about the average person and how, you know, ignorant and stupid they are when really... <laughs> He's one of the guys that can be blamed for keeping this paradigm right the way it is. In fact, helping it, growing it, right? By putting up all these truth about videos that have no truth in them. The only truth in the truth about Stefan Molyneux videos is that they're full of shit. And they take corporate media stories and they just apply his social anarchist sort of spin to them. Take them as complete fact. Take 9-11 as complete fact, which is the biggest fucking idiocy that i could ever think of in my life i mean the, the people that still buy 9-11 that uh, have access to the internet and should be you know should have seen umpting videos on at least building seven alone and yet you know still go out and put up videos the truth about this the truth about al-qaeda right so let's continue on here uh with mr molyneux exposing himself did you have, why should you have any day. freedom yeah why should Great you have any freedom? men and women fought and bled and thought and died to give you freedoms that you are willing to turn in for your fucking food stamps. See how disgusting that is? Great women and men fought for your freedom, fought and died for your freedom that you're willing to turn into food stamps. Let's think about that for a second. I imagine he's referring to the world wars, right? Especially World War II, hey, that wonderful fight against fascism and how, you know, the good guys won, right? Spielberg tells you all the time in the movies. Um, isn't that hilarious? Because most of those people that went off to fight in those wars were just regular kind of ignorant people that didn't know shit all about anything. If you think people are ignorant now, go back a hundred years when these wars were happening and they didn't really know much. I mean, they, all they knew was what they read from the paper. And we know what that is worth. You think this manipulation hasn't been there forever? You think the Romans didn't use it or the Greeks didn't use it or all these other civilizations that existed throughout history didn't use propaganda, didn't use false flags, didn't fucking completely fool people? The only thing that we don't do uh, in our modern education system is teach people the ability of critical thought. 
so that what we get is people that trust media stories without doing any work. You get all these um, uh, dentists, right, or or um, engineers, or uh, professors, right, ah, PhDs, all these things, right. So when they talk about their work, you know, you're building a bridge, you have to test it, you have to, you know, it has to, you have to go first. You put up your theory, or you build your model, and then you test it, and then you have your peers review it and all that. But nobody does any of that. All these people with these big degrees that. Uh, you know, function in the world, use none of that knowledge that they've learned in their particular fields to apply it to the corporate media. They never do at all, ever. They just accept it. They just, you know, sit back and say, well, it must be true because Wolf Blitzer and Bill O'Reilly are talking about it. And Peter Baldsbridge, right? And that is exactly what is going on. I, it is, uh, you know, this is the war that we're up against. This is why my channel is shut down and suspended um, because I have dangerous information. It's information that will wake up people, that will break the paradigm that people are living in, and therefore I'm a dangerous person. Stefan Molyneux is not only, you know, he's contributing to this paradigm. He is helping this paradigm. He is working for the New World Order. Whether he knows it or not, whether he's already made the deal or not, I have a high suspicion that he probably has, considering how, uh, you know, how excited his voice is. Oh, I would love that call. I would love to get that call, you know. For a little welfare check. For a big screen TV. I mean, what is humanity fit for except being ruled? On what possible grounds should we fight and bleed and die for people who simply will clamor for another master? There you go. So, I mean, it couldn't, you know, it might as well be Nick Rockefeller, right, saying this. Um, this is exactly how uh, Nick Rockefeller talked to Aaron Russo about the bottom feeders. And why would you give a shit about these people? They're such losers they have no free will they're they're cattle they're you know less than dogs you know uh that is exactly how they think so now you're seeing stefan molyneux's true colors coming through what he really thinks about humanity and that it's fucking disgusting it's fucking disgusting because i think humanity is amazing i just think that the most humanity doesn't know it the power that we would have collectively as a species if we actually understood manipulation if we actually had critical thought if everyone could reach their potential could you imagine what kind of civilization we would have we would be the beacon of hope in in, in our solar system and in our galaxy perhaps instead no we are you know we're cattle we're turned into cattle we're turned into disgusting fat bodies that are there to consume the products that these hideous corporations make in order to further, you know, erode our intelligence, further erode our health, Codex Alimentarius, right? Genetically modified foods. They don't care about your health. Bill Gates and his vaccinations. He doesn't care about saving people. He wants to bring the population down. And that's the truth about scumbags like Stefan Molyneux. Because they really, deep down inside, he, he loathes humanity. He really does. And yet he doesn't see how humanity has become what it is he doesn't see how everyone has been a victim of this of these banks of this system of the television of the mind control of the fear-based propaganda of 9-11 of the boston bombing sandy hook aurora all these different events jfk go back and back and back they use all these events all the time to program your mind to control you then the popular culture the nfl Right, the evil NFL, which I, I truly do believe the people that run the NFL are evil sons of bitches, right? And uh, of course, all the distraction stories that come out, the people like this recent guy now for for abusing his wife, all this stuff is all there to control you. There's always a story every week. There's always something for the pundits on the media to be talking about, and the people at their jobs, the water cooler to to to, to talk about. That's how it works. They keep you, they constantly fabricate these stories in order to control your mind and to keep you, you know, so far away from reaching your potential. That's the worst thing they want. And that's why someone like Stefan Molyneux says, there's no way you got to serve somebody. So who are you going to serve? 
you know, if you serve the evil side, well, you're going to you're going to get money and wealth and all these wonderful things. And you're going to be, you know, girls, you're going to be rich and all that. But if you serve the side of good, well, what's going to happen? Well, <laughs> look at Free Radio Revolution and his channel being shut down and, and uh, two years now of having strikes against my channel for 100 percent bullshit things just because YouTube doesn't like the truth that I'm putting out. Google, I mean. So, uh, you know, it's, it's quite disgusting to hear this guy's true colors come out. Let's keep it going, though. Who, if you give them an inch of freedom, strike at you like vipers. Who, if you give them an ounce of responsibility, call you a man-hater and a woman-hater and all the terrible words at their command. Here, here's a little responsibility. And then their, <laughs> their shoulders turn into vipers that strike at you. Because all they say is, oh, yes, I'm a big adult. I want responsibility. I want to vote. No, they don't want to vote. They don't want to vote. They, they, they want to be flattered by politicians. They don't want to vote and actually have responsibility. They want to exchange their freedom for free stuff. <laughs> I mean, the devil walks the world in the shape of a flag. And people get so little for their souls, it's pitiful. Oh, you could have freedom, you could have responsibility. No, no, I want flattery. And I want a government contract. I want union protection. And you hear all this, you know, I'm listening to this, I'm thinking of the, the, the gossip magazines at the supermarkets, how they program the minds of women, you know, um, how beauty is worshipped above everything else, right? The, the you know, just the, the most superficial things are celebrated in our culture. The programming in the media, the, every time you turn on the television and you get the ads coming through, whether they're subliminal ads, whether they're, um, you know, product placements within the actual programs, or they're just the hideous ads themselves that are constantly telling you that, you know what, you're no good. You've got to have this product. You've got to drink this beverage. You've got to, you know, shop here. You've got to get this thing in your, your body, right? Well, that'll be soon with uh, all the RFID chips and, and microchips that they want to put into you. Um, that's how they condition you. Humanity is being preyed upon, uh, Stefan Molyneux. That is what's happening. These, the satanic vampire elite that run our planet prey upon humanity. They use us as cattle. And if you can't see that, you're a fucking idiot and a tool and the worst type of tool that there is. So let's listen more to this scumbag. I want to be a professor. I mean, what are they fit for? What are you fit for? being ruled. Look at everything they give up. The generations of heroes and heroines fought and died heroes to and provide heroines. them. Generations of heroes and heroines. Thor, Iron Man, Spider-Man, Captain America. Hero <laughs> heroes and heroines. Who are the heroines? Wonder Woman, right? Uh, Spider Woman. There's always a Bat Woman, too. I'm sure there's always a female version of every stinking fucking superhero that they programmed your minds with. What utter fucking trash that is to think those people are heroes right heroes why because somebody put a gun in their hand and told them to go shoot somebody i was in the military and i'll tell you one thing about the military that eh, maybe you don't know you'll learn that in five minutes once you sign up and you show up on the on the parade square the last thing the military wants is individuals of you know critical thought it's the last thing they want they don't want you to think like an individual ever they destroy individuality they stomp it out and that's always been the case for soldiers why do you think in every you know avenger marvel batman x-men type movie the military are portrayed as heroes every time there's something happens it's the military because they're programming people to go into the military the military is mind control it's the strongest form of mind control that exists within our countries bar none you know, outside of taking people and, and, and you know, um, locking them up and programming them a la fucking Clockwork Orange, right? Which I'm sure does happen. Uh, we can talk MK Ultra and Monarch programming and all that. Outside of that, nothing is more programming than the military. So for this guy to call these people that fought in the past heroes and heroines, like they're untouchable. They're a silver surfer, right? They're just these wonderful... They're fucking people. They're the same people today, except 50 pounds lighter, right? 
And were they smarter? Maybe a little bit because they haven't been as conditioned by things like television, right? But they're just the same. It's always been class. Always, All these wars have always been about classes being able to control lower classes. Go watch the, the, the epic film, The Grande Illusion, there, of World War I. And it's the elites, of course, that totally arrange for the war to happen and they use their propaganda to get people in the streets people in the streets of paris in the streets of london were cheering they were cheering war because they hadn't had war in almost a hundred years or a real world war a real huge conflict so that the 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 they pumped up the nostalgia of war um through the media through the newspapers of the time so that people actually came out and cheered and played songs and drank and danced, saying, how wonderful, we're going off to war. Now you can be a, a hero in, in, the, in, in this battle. And the people that fought on the front lines, of course, the whole thing has been taken over by Hollywood and the Jewish uh, propaganda arm of, you know, the entertainment industry. Who, uh, you know, there's a good side and there's a bad side. There's the evil Germans, right? And everything they did was evil. And then there's the uh, the, the, the West and, and the Jews who did all this wonderful stuff, right? And fought the evil tyrants. And it could be nothing further from the truth when really you just had soldiers who had no idea what the fuck was going on. Who lived through absolute fucking hell. You know why they lived through hell, Stefan? Because if they tried to defect they would be shot in the back of the head i don't know what the stats are for how many fucking soldiers were killed in world war one in the trenches for trying to uh abandon their post or for not climbing over the barrier when the whistle was blown to go and charge in a futile attempt and you can go through years where maybe a few hundred feet of territory went back and forth where, you know, these battle lines were drawn and people just died and the mustard gas and all this, you know, chemical weapons that they were using. There's nothing glamorous about war, you fucking idiot. There's nothing glamorous about these people. They were victims, just like the people that you're fucking insulting right now. The disgusting fat bodies that were made into cattle by the New World Order that you can't wait to hear a fucking phone call from. You know, the evilness that is at work is at work on channels like this one. Joining the New World Order with Stefan Molyneux. The truth about Stefan Molyneux is that he's a fucking scumbag. Alright? And, uh, you know, it's disgusting to hear this type of talk. You know, this complete idiocy. Yes, I was a history major, so I know all about these fucking wars, you scumbag. You think you're smart? You think you're so fucking smart? Why don't you take me on? And he didn't take me on when I challenged him before. No, he ran away like a little sissy, right? And I sent them many tweets, and I sent them personal messages, and I put Im uh, messages on his videos saying, you're going to debate me about the truth about Elliot Roger, because I know the truth about the Santa Barbara shooting, and I know it was 100% staged propaganda, anti-gun, you know, connected to Bloomberg, May mayors against guns. I actually did the work, you know, spent, I don't know, dozens maybe even hundreds of hours researching, finding out all these details, finding out who people like Simon Astaire were, right? All the connections, putting all those things together, right? But no, you, you instead, you just come along, read a couple articles off, you know, the New York Times and uh, the Washington Post, and here you go. It's the truth about it. The truth about an event that is 100% staged, mind control, propaganda, new world order, Right? You are already part of the New World Order, Stefan Molyneux. You know, whether you fucking know it or not. And if you don't know it, you're a fucking idiot. Well, you are an idiot, right? Period. Let's hear more of your fucking bullshit. And they give it up for nothing. For whoever gets to call them the chosen people. And God's people and the indispensable nation. And heroes for being born in a square squirt of sanctified dirt square wonderful what are they willing to fight for what are they willing to defy anything for fight for state people can't even take a walk after dinner <laughs> a third of canadians don't follow their doctor's orders even if they have things like diabetes where failing to follow your doctor's orders cause causes amputation blindness and death 
hey, you know, follow your doctor's orders, your doctors that were schooled in Rockefeller medicine, where a pill is the answer to everything. Yeah, you got to follow them. You got to follow them blindly. You got to do everything they say, right? Get radiated. Get fucking, you get, yeah. Just fucking nuke your body if anything fucking suspicious pops up, right? Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. Keep it going, Stefan. I love this. I'm Mick loving it, man. So I, I get it. I understand the degree to which sometimes we look at the current clay of humanity and say, how on earth are we supposed to build the cathedrals of the future <laughs> of the soft and buttery soulless clay? How on earth are we supposed to build the cathedrals of the future? Maybe you should look at how they built the cathedrals of the past and how those people were treated, right? And how it took 150 years. Cathedrals, cathedrals. It's the, the height of of mind control, the height of power. These buildings that would take two, three hundred years sometimes to build. Some of them, they're still building, right? Where they towered over everything in every little town, where people couldn't escape their, you know, the grasp of the clergy, you know, who would brainwash people and send them off to wars and, you know, let them starve and let them die in famines. Yeah, the church did some good work. Sure, there's always some good work. But mostly what they did is they just fucking raped the people, stole their money, kept them in poverty, and kept them ignorant. And we're talking about how we're going to build the cathedrals of the future? Right? I'd hate to say it, but maybe we should tear down the cathedrals of the past. Although, you know, they are <laughs> very beautiful. Of course they were. Because that's where every blood, sweat, and tear of the people went to. To building these things which was all about idolatry, which Jesus Christ himself would fucking just fall down and start puking if he saw what had become of his message, right? And I'm not even Christian, but I, I sure as hell appreciate the beautiful message of Christ, right? And uh, I think it's disgusting that this kind of thought, you know, this romantic sort of viewpoint of history, you know, espoused by fucking tools like Stefan Molyneux, Yes, there's so much better in the past. These people actually, they were fucking serfs. You know, feudalism, you think you had rights then? Yeah, maybe you don't have rights now, but fucking sure as shit you didn't have rights then, right? You stood up against your local fucking tyrant, you think you'd last long, your head would be on a noose. They would fucking, you know, they would draw on and core you. You know, whatever medieval, disgusting sort of mind control that they would use in public squares, hanging, burning people, right? And yeah, yeah, that's great. Let's talk about the cathedrals. This fucking idiocy. Of the present. Where people will rush to look at new pictures of Jennifer Lawrence and studiously avoid philosophy because it is the curse of their very existence that they know deep down <laughs> their current identities cannot survive. So I understand. Uh, I understand the temptation. I mean, the only way I avoid it is to look to the future rather than the present. But that's perhaps a story for another time. Does that does that help at all? That's just hilarious, man. <laughs> the only way he avoids is looking to the future. Ah, look into the future. Hmm. Make a deal. Future looks bright. Isn't that the case with the new world order? You know, everybody that signs on and does the dirty deeds, and uh, hey, everything comes your way. And your channels get featured and you get hundreds of thousands of subscribers and you're able to propagate bullshit all fucking day long and get paid handsomely for it. You know, I didn't expect to be this angry when I did it. I listened to this segment before and I was like, okay, there's no way I can avoid talking about this. And um, people that know me know that, uh, well, now I can truly say I hate Stefan Molyneux. I hate this piece of shit. I think he's a fucking revolting human being, and I think his philosophy is fucking garbage. All right? And, um, hey, if you're a Stefan Molyneux follower, you're a blind fucking fool. Really, you are. Because this guy doesn't know shit all, and if he knows it, he's keeping it from you. He's a fucking gatekeeper. So this title is deeply ironic that you put up here, Joining the New World Order, because uh, that's what you're telling your, your fellow uh, listeners to do, really, basically. If you can't beat them, join them, right? Why not? Cenk Uger did. Anderson Cooper did. All of them. They all did, fuck, right? Anybody who's big in the media has joined them. And that is why you get Cenk Uger every freaking day, every other day, talking about taking the guns out of the house. Got to get the guns out of the house. Get the guns out. Get the guns out of the house, right? 
it's disgusting this type of mind control that is going on and it's disgusting the censorship that is accompanying it it's disgusting how channels like mine are shut down and nary a word from the big um alternative we call them the pseudo alternative channels um what can i say all i can say is that um we have to expose these gatekeepers and that's what I do. That's why I'm subscribed to some of these fucking assholes. Because I got to keep an eye on what they're doing. Because they're taking a lot of people that would otherwise come down our lane. And come and see our work. And see how we're exposing that, you know what, Sandy Hook is a lie. Right? You know what, Boston bombing, fake. You know what, the Elliot Rogers, fake. Navy Yard shooting, fake. 9-11, um, inside job, Right? all go back throughout history and that's the difference between us and the stefan molyneux is that we don't let the truth become a victim of our own success we are here for one reason only and that is to expose the truth that is going on and i've never had a fantasy about getting a fucking phone call from the bilderberg so i go tell them fuck themselves a hundred different ways and fuck their mothers while they're at it because they're disgusting fucking sons of bitches right so uh screw you stefan molyneux and your fucking bullshit philosophy and i can't help but swear when i get angry and that's just the way it goes with free radio revolution so if you had a problem with that go fuck yourself right go fuck yourself because i'm sick of this bullshit and i'm sick of these fucking gatekeepers taking everyone down the bullshit path all right these people need to be exposed, right? They're criminals, all right? They are criminals, all right? In my mind, they're criminals, and I would lock them up if I had the power to do so. Thank you for listening, and I hope you have a wonderful day.